Um, but does, is this in Cubase? In Cubase, I do it manually. <gasps> like yeah, look, I, look, do you see move? Ah! Now you oh can like God. break these up into like different tracks. Oh, you, you can own? tune it in here. Oh! So you basically have like a Melodyne in here. Mm. Do you have that on Cubase? Uh, um, I probably, I probably don't. It's already in Cubase. I woke up this morning, made myself some coffee while watching YouTube videos, like I usually do. And this video showed up on my feed. Can I convert this Cubase user to Logic Pro? So this is a video made by Sides on her YouTube channel. If you don't know who Sides is, she's a self-produced artist and educator, and also a Logic Pro guru. So if you're watching this video and you work with Logic Pro, you have to check her out. Now in this video, she has a guest called Dovidas. He's a guitar player player, a producer, artist, all that stuff. He has a huge YouTube channel, 1.7 million subscribers. Now I have to admit, I never heard of him before, so I'm gonna have to check his channel out. But this guy is a top musician and he also works in Cubase. Now she's trying to convince him to go from Cubase to Logic Pro by showing him some Logic Pro features that supposedly are not available in Cubase. Let's break this down. This man, this great man, has chosen the DAW. Cubase. Cubase. So, as you all know, I am a Logic Pro girly, and I am going to show him very cool tricks that may get you to buy a Mac computer by Logic Pro. Wow. It might. It's like a okay, buy a Mac computer, yeah, I do agree with that. Two years ago, I switched from PC to Mac. I have no regrets. I'm gonna ask you, can Cubase do this? Let's say we're recording a song, we're gonna record it in 104 BPM. Does that work for you? That's 104, that's a good That's a good tempo. Okay, so if we press Option T, this window will pop up. Interesting. And now if you click Track Alternatives, Okay. you see this little arrow here? I do see the arrow. So what we can do is like record something in. So I'm gonna uh -huh. press R to record, ready? Okay. Okay, now they start recording some stuff. Now they recorded two guitar takes. Let's continue. So, now you can toggle back and forth between the two. Oh, wow. Do you have that on Cubase? Uh, um, I, prob I probably don't. It pr it's, it's a good one, right? It's, it's a good one. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I have to say, it's a fun video to watch, very entertaining. But let's go in Cubase and check if we have something similar to this feature from Logic Pro. Now I have a bunch of a bass line recorded on the same channel. And if I want to toggle between all these takes, it's very simple. I right click straight on the audio event and I can put any of these recordings to front. Okay, basically it gives me the list of all the takes that I recorded so far and I can switch from one to the other. Very simple. But if I go on the top of the left zone, I can click on show lanes and there you go, I have a complete visual of all the takes I recorded on this channel. And Logic Pro also has that feature, by the way. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> it's like an old reference. All right. Yes, okay, tell so me Okay, so if size. you press open up project settings. Yes. And then we go over to recording, mm -hmm. and then we select automatically colorize takes. Okay. So now, if we do um, a loop, we're gonna do a loop over here, and we're gonna, you're just gonna record over this over and over again. So okay. we'd be like comping, right? So, okay. and we'll press R to record, let's go. And they go over and record a few takes. Amazing. Okay, so now you can see that each take that he did is a different color. So oh, that wow. could be really helpful so, so for we, you to, when you're picking which one's your favorite and when you're going through and comping. Mm -hmm. So we can just zoom in. So like, let's say you liked this little lick here and you want this one, uh -huh. or you liked this okay. little lick here. Yellow, green. That's cool. And then we're gonna use like, see this, now it's red. So you can, it's I really see. helpful when you're like, Okay, so on the Cubase side, if we go take a look. Now for this one, as far as I know, I, I don't think there's a way to colorize with different colors the different lanes while recording. However, we can do it afterwards, of course, like he mentioned in this video also, uh, by just selecting any lane you want and just, you know, shift, click 
on the uh, the left edge of the lane and you know from that point you can select any color available into your color palette and that's it. Now on my side, it's not something that I do because as far as the organization goes to comp my recordings, it's pretty simple. Now the take that is playing is actually the one that is in bright color, okay? All the other takes are gonna be more grayed out and very simple to comp. I can use the comp tool like this and just select by clicking on the take I wanna keep to build my final take. And that's it. Very, very simple. And again, uh, I can see right away visually that the takes that are in bright color are the ones selected for the final take. But to be fair, I'm going to give Logic Pro this one for the automatic colorization of lanes as you record. That's not a bad feature. All right, let's move on. Next tip! So let's say you're happy with this take. You can just click, click on this button uh -huh. and do uh, flatten and merge. So now it's gonna merge it all together into oh, one. Wow. But you wanna cut- No, I see that Davidas is impressed with this one. So let's jump in Cubase, select all my comping. And the only thing you need to do is to go under audio and down to bounce selection. And I have a key command assigned to this one because this is something that I do all the time to consolidate some editing or effects that I have directly on some audio events, or when I do some pitch correcting, which we're gonna look at later. So I'm just gonna apply bound selection and click on replace, and there you go. That's it, that simple. Cut out all these spaces, maybe your guitar was like buzzing or whatever, and you wanna like cut out all the silences. Like noise right? gate, right? Right, okay. so we're gonna press Control X, oh, wow. and this window's gonna pop up, and it will automatically cut up oh, all the silences. Threshold. And then we just do BAM! And so now oh, you can like God. break these up into like different tracks. Oh my God. Like you can just drag this one here, uh -huh. or like, yeah, just like do whatever you want. Whatever we want. Isn't that super cool? That is great. That is like, if it, like, like if it's like an amp, is like, yeah. And it's really good with hum. vocals if you want right. to like cut like the silence. No. But does, is this in Cubase? In Cubase, I do it manually. <gasps> Manual labor. Let me show you. Sides. But I have to say that lots of time I also do it manually just because I'm used to it, you know, and I have way more control. However, there is a feature in Cubase that will detect all silences and cut them off. You select your event, like I do with this vocal recording. So the only thing you need to do is to click on the event, go on top under audio, down to advanced, and click on detect silence. And there's also a key command assigned to this one. You click on it and there you go. Now you can adjust a lot of parameters like the threshold level and all that stuff, the pre-roll, post-roll, you can apply fades. I can also analyze the whole thing. And then when, once I'm ready, I can just click on Process and there you go. It did the job pretty well. That was very fast. Are you impressed? Honestly, I'm honestly impressed and my impression level You know if there's like a threshold it, it keeps rising like a hockey stick statistical <laughs> display of Units of excitement and impression okay, units. You okay, now I hope you watch my video and be as impressed as you already have those features in Cubase so far. <laughs> So what they did for the next one, he recorded a guitar line and on top of that, a couple of harmonies. Let's go check it out. A harmony to the lead one, right? So what you can do is press option T and then select groove track, right? Okay. Now, if you hover over this little box, you can click the a star. star. That's my favorite geometrical shape. Yeah, a star. Uh -huh. And then you can click this to match that groove track. So it's gonna analyze this and match it to your lead. Is it like right? intelligence? Like yeah, AI? look, look, do you see move? Ah! <laughs> I like this guy. He's entertaining. That's insane. No, come on, aren't you impressed? I'm, I'm impressed. And so that's a. That's a Why are you losing it? Well, you made some mistakes, but that's okay. It's no, no, it's, 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 it's. Okay, so basically, uh, it aligned the two harmonies with the lead guitar line, which is cool. And the way, I have to say that the way it's done in Logic is actually pretty nice. Uh, just by assigning the master track with that little star, this is quite neat, I have to say. So I'm gonna take this lead vocal, nothing is mixed by the way, and there's also a bunch of back vocals going on. Take a chance. 
once and think it over before it's over, won't you? I'm going to use a tool called Audio Alignment. Straight from Cubase, it's a very nice tool. Does about the same thing as what we just saw in Logic Pro. So I'm going to take this main lead vocal recording and I'm going to use it as the reference for the other recordings to sync to, okay? So by selecting this lead vocal audio event, I'm going to click on the plus sign inside the audio alignment panel beside reference. And from this point, I can select any other track and add this one as the target or several targets, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to select all of them, which are doubles and also harmonies. And I'm going to click on the plus sign and they're all going to be processed uh, to the reference recording. So I'm going to click on match words. I can select prefer time shifting over time stretching. Okay, personal choice, you can try both and see how that goes. And I'm going to click on aligned audio. So that was pretty fast and everything is ready to go. Take a chance and think it over before it's over, won't you? So that's for vocals. Let's try it on the guitar, see how that goes. So what about these two guitars? All right, let's do the same. I'm going to reopen audio alignment, use the first guitar recording as the reference and the second one as the target. And this, you know, this time around, I'm going to uncheck the match words and then uh, let's keep the preferred time shifting on. See how that goes. So that works, you know, but on my side, when it comes to guitars, I kind of like to do it manually. I have way more control opposed to trusting the algorithm too much, you know? Now these types of features uh, like audio alignment in Cubase or, you know, the other feature in Logic Pro are pretty cool to work with. So just to show you that you can also do this in Cubase. Now, if you ask me if I use these types of features all the time, I'm gonna say no, because I do like for guitars, for example, I do like to edit them manually for this type of thing for several reasons, which is gonna be for another video. Okay, let's continue. You weren't on pitch on all of them. It's okay, we all make mistakes, it's, we're just human. Listen, we're now- everyone's... You could double click, and then you can click this icon. What is, what did you do, what did you do? This icon, this little infinity it's thing. It's infinity, it's like, then the, you did you do... ever doodle that in like- in... I did. That's that, that icon, is that what that meant? To infinity and beyond. And then you can click flex pitch. Flex pitch, reapply, revert, yeah, we're going to do reapply. Reapply, okay. And now Analyze. it's analyzing. Now we scroll okay. down uh -huh. and we find it. And oh, you can oh. tune it in here. Oh. So you basically have like a Melodyne in here. Melodyne. So you can do pitch drift. You can do fine pitch. pitch. You can do pitch drift Jesus. on this side. It's already in Cubase. It's called Very Audio. Very simple. You double click on the audio recording event. On the left side, you click on the Very Audio tab. Make sure you click on Edit Very Audio. It's going to analyze your recording and there you go. And from this point, you can manually pitch correct your vocal recording, which is great. And it's very easy to work with. So you can select a bunch of events and from the left zone, you have a bunch of parameters you can adjust to all those selections and you can also do it straight from those events. I actually made a full video uh, talking about very audio and how to pitch correct a recording to make it sound natural. So I'm gonna leave the link down below, check this video out. Uh, but you can definitely do this in Cubase. And you can also take all of these vocal notes and extract some MIDI notes based on the vocal performance, which is awesome. So I have all the notes that were performed from that vocal recording. So this tool is actually very, very powerful and it is part of Cubase. Now, to be fair, there's different versions of Cubase out there. There's a Cubase Elements, Cubase Artist, and Cubase Pro. Now, I'm using Cubase Pro. I assume Dovidas also uses Cubase Pro, but if you use Cubase Elements, some of the features shown in this video will not be available on this version. My goal was not to bash or criticize those creators. 
they are great at what they do. And again, I'm gonna encourage you to go and follow them. And I know that some people in the comments section of that video were criticizing a bit uh, Davidas about his knowledge of Cubase. Uh, I'm gonna say something right away. I've been working with Cubase for more than 20 years. And I started to dive in Cubase maybe like 10 years ago, like really seriously diving into Cubase. But before that, you know, I just knew the stuff that I needed to know to make my music, to serve my clients, to make a living out of producing and mixing music, nothing more. So if you do produce music in Cubase, of course it's impossible to know everything about the software. Actually, most people working in a DAW don't know their DAW that well. So that's why people like myself, Dom Sigalas, Sides for uh, Logic Pro, make video content to share our knowledge. So if you're a Cubase user who wants to dive way more into the software, to get way more control, to get better workflow when producing music, you can check out my course, The Ultimate Guide to Cubase. I'm gonna leave the link down below with a special discount. All right, take care, my friend. See you next time.